Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to migrate data from Snowflake to SQL Server using SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is that we will migrate data first from Snowflake to SQL Server table and then we will migrate data from SQL Server to Snowflake. For this particular migration, we will be using the SSIS data flow components from DevArt. They offer a different variety of components which you can use to migrate data from one source to another destination. For example, you can migrate data from MySQL, Oracle, Salesforce and Snowflake. And there are components available for a different sources as well. Right now they are celebrating the 27th anniversary of the DevArt. So that's why they are offering the 20% off on all the products. And as you can see, this offer will end in the six days. However, if you want to use their component later as well, then you can use the promo code learn SSIS 10 for the 10% discount on the SSIS integration universal bundle. I will share the promo code with you and you can download a trial version for 30 days as well so that you can just test their components. Okay. So in this particular demo, we will be using the Snowflake. So first of all, you need to create an account on the Snowflake. So I have created a free account for 30 days. Okay. So if you have the free account or maybe the paid account, so the approach or the method to migrate data from Snowflake to SQL Server and vice versa, it will be same for all kind of accounts. So I can simply click on this particular link and then I can click on the start for free. And here, if you don't have an account, then you can just fill all this particular information and you can create an account. But if you have an existing account, then you can click on this one, sign into an existing account. So I can click on this particular account and then it will ask for my credentials. So the Chrome has saved my credentials. So I can simply click on the sign in and it will let me sign into my account. So I have logged into my account here. Okay. And if you want to see the uh, databases, so you can click on the data. So here you have two kind of databases. One is Snowflake, another one is the Snowflake sample data. So if you expand the Snowflake sample data, then you can see that there are different schemas here like TPCH underscore SF1. So if you expand this one, then you can see the tables option here. And for example, if you expand the tables, then you can see different tables here. Like we have customer table, line item, nation orders, different tables here. And we have different schemas. Okay. So we will migrate data from maybe from customer table or from maybe orders, you know, you can migrate data from any table. Okay. So you can also write the queries here. The queries are very much similar to the SQL queries. Okay. So to write the SQL queries, you can uh, click on the snowflake option here. And then there is an option query data. Okay. So you can click on this particular option. Now I can expand the snowflake sample data database then I can expand this particular schema and then I can expand the tables. So suppose I want to see the data in the customer table. So I can click on this particular option and then it will show an option place name in the editor. Okay. So I can write a select query like select star from. So this is my query. Now to execute this particular query, you can select this one and then click on this option. So as soon as you will click on this particular icon, it will actually start executing the query and, and it will pull the data from the snowflake. So the query ran fine in 72 millisecond and it has pulled 150,000 records. Okay. So that's a lot of data that it has pulled. Okay. And suppose if you want to select data from some other table, for example, from supplier table, so I can uh, write supplier here. Okay. And then I can, uh, execute this particular query. So it will show you the supplier data. So in the supplier table, you have 10,000 records. Okay. So the data looks good. Like it contains supplier key, then supplier S name, then address, phone number. There are a lot of information here. Okay. So it contains 10,000 records. Now suppose I want to migrate this table a supplier table with 10,000 records into the SQL server, then how I can do that. So for that particular thing, we will be using the DevArt components because we don't have any inbuilt components in SSIS. So let me open the Visual Studio. So this is my Visual Studio 
and to migrate the data we will be using the data flow task so i can simply drag and drop the data flow task into the control flow window okay so i can call this particular data flow task as snow flag to sql server okay and i can double click on this one so our source will be the devart snowflake source so i can click on the toolbox and i can type snowflake here so there are three type of snowflake components snowflake source snowflake destination and the snowflake lookup so we will be using the snowflake source to read the data from the snowflake now we can configure the snowflake source so i can right click on this one and click on edit now the first thing that we will do we will create a connection to the snowflake so i can click on the drop down and there is an option create new connection manager so i can click on this option okay so this is the devart snowflake connection manager editor so you need to provide the details here so inside the domain option you need to provide a url here so when you have created an account on the snowflake then you might have get this particular email activate your snowflake account so if you scroll down then you can see this option that save this for later once you activate your account you can access it at this one so you can copy this particular link until snowflakecomputing.com so copy this particular link and then paste it here okay now inside the user id you need to provide your username so my user id is is akil33 and then you need to provide the password here so i'm providing my password okay and then you need to provide the database name so if you log into the snowflake then inside the databases you can see the database name the database name is this one snowflake sample data okay so this is the database name so i can copy the database name from here and then you can provide the database name here and now inside the schema you can actually provide this particular schema name tpchsf1 okay so you can copy the schema name from here copy this one and then paste it here now if you click on the test connection then you can see that the connection is successful so i can click on okay then you can click on okay so now you can see that this particular schema has been added to the tables and if you want to see the tables inside this particular schema so you can click on the plus sign so as soon as you click on the plus icon you can see all the tables available in the tpch_sf1 schema so if you want to migrate the data for the supplier table then you can click on the supplier table and you can see all the available columns inside the supplier table so if you want to select the data from the supplier table then you can simply drag and drop the supplier table into the query window and it will automatically generate the select query for the supplier table now if you want to preview the data so you can click on this particular option preview data and then you can see the data available in the table so this is the data these are the columns and this is the data so this is showing the first top 100 records from the table so i can close this one so on the right side we have the variables option as well so if you have some user defined variable or the system variable so you can use the user defined variable or the system variable in your source queries which can make the queries dynamic okay so i can click on okay and this will actually select the data from the supplier table so we have configured the snowflake source now if i want to write the data into the sql server database then i can use the oledb destination to write the data into the sql server database so i can just simply drag and drop the oledb destination into the data flow task and then i can connect the snowflake source with the oledb destination now i can configure the oledb destination click new to create a new connection so i already have a connection to the devar database i have a devar database on my machine so i will be migrating the data to the devar database so i can select this particular connection manager click okay and then from the data access mode i will select the table or view fast load now i can click new to create a new table i will call my table as supplier so i can type the name as supplier and then click okay so it should have created a supplier table however it's not showing the table right now because the table is just created so if you refresh the tables then you can see a supplier table so now you can see the supplier table if you select the data from the table then the table is empty so i can go back to the ssis package now i can click on the mappings to make sure that input columns have been mapped with the destination columns and then i can click on okay 
so if i want to execute the package then i can click on the start button and it should execute the package and it should pull data from the snowflake and should write the data into the sql server database all right so the migration of the data from the snowflake to sql server is successful and now if i re execute the query then you can see the data here so right now it's showing 1000 records however if i remove the top 1000 clause then you can see all 10000 records that the data has been migrated correctly into the sql server database okay so this is working absolutely fine okay and now i want to migrate the data from the sql server table into the snowflake so suppose i have this table uh, nation table which contains 10 nations name like australia new zealand norway all these records so i want to migrate this data from the sql server into the snowflake okay so i can go back to the snowflake and uh, if you see here right now i have only two databases okay suppose i want to create one additional database and i want to migrate the data into a new database then i can create a new database here either i can create the database using the gui or i can use the sql queries as well suppose let me create the database using the queries so i can go to the query data option and then i can write the queries here so i actually already written some queries so let me copy all these queries and tell you what they are doing right now so this is the first query create database test so if i execute this one then it will create a new database test so you can see that the database test successfully created so if you refresh the databases now then you will find an additional test database here so you can see that a new test database got created and if you expand this one then you can see uh, two schema here information schema and then this is the public schema show grants on database test if you want to see the permissions on this particular database so you can click on this option and then you can see that uh, the ownership of the database is given to account admin user okay so the account admin is the is contain the ownership of the database so this is good now to select a particular database you can execute this query use test so if i execute this one then the database will be selected and now to create a table like i can create a nation table here so i can execute this particular create table statement so the table nation successfully created okay now if you want to see the data from the table so you can execute this particular select statement so right now the table should be empty so this contains these four columns but it contains zero rows right now okay so i want to insert the data into this particular table test.public.nation okay so i can go back to the ssis package and uh, i can actually disable this particular task and i can use another data flow task okay and i will call this particular data flow task as sql server to snowflake okay and then i can double click the data flow task this time our source is a sql server table so we can use the oledb source here so i can simply drag and drop the oledb source into the data flow task and then i can configure the oledb source here from the data access mode i will use the sql command and then i can select the data from this particular nation table so i can remove the top 1000 clause from here and i can copy the query from here paste the query from here you can also preview the data that this data will be migrated so i can click on close okay so we have configured the oledb source now it's time to configure the snowflake destination so i can click on the ssis toolbox and then i can write snowflake here you can see the snowflake destination so this destination will be used to insert data into the snowflake so i can connect the oledb source with the snowflake destination now we can configure the snowflake destination now there is one important thing that the existing snowflake connection manager that is pointing to a different database however this time we have created a new database so we need to create a new connection manager okay so what we can do we can click ok and then we can create a new connection manager so i can click on new connection and now from the 
connection type we can select the snowflake option so there is an option divert snowflake so click on add now you need to provide all the details again like the domain name then the user id password and then the database name so the database name is test schema schema name is public okay you can see that the database name is test and the schema is public okay so all the details are fine so you can click on test connection now the connection is successful so i can click on okay okay now you can also if you want to rename you can also rename this one and you can call it as uh, devart snowflake and then the test so that you know that this will connect to the test database now we can configure the snowflake destination now from the connection manager we will select the devart snowflake test connection manager now you can click on the component properties and then from the object name you can select the object which is the nation object so you can select public dot nation so this is fine this was the only table available in the database okay now you can go to the column mappings so the input columns have been mapped with the destination columns so you can click on okay however you are getting an error here so it's saying that the bulk file storage must be specified if bulk insert equal to true so it is saying that if you are trying to do the bulk insert then you need to specify the bulk file storage option so in this particular method there are two options available either is amazon s3 or azure so in case if you are using the azure then you need to provide the azure storage account here in case if you don't have the information about the azure storage account azure storage account key all these options then what you can do uh, you can uh, disable the bulk insert option so you can set the bulk insert to false okay so i can set it to false and then from the bulk file storage we can set it to none okay now this should be fine and i can click on okay now the error will gone okay so if you want to execute this particular task so just right click here then click on execute task either you can execute it from here or you can just simply click on the start button or right click on the package and click on execute packages so this will execute the ssis package so you can see that the migration of the data from the sql server to snowflake is successful and it has migrated 10 records from the sql server to snowflake now if you go back to the snowflake and if you read on this particular select query then you should see the data there so you can see that the data has been migrated successfully it has selected 10 rows okay and these are the countries name australia new zealand norway sweden okay so the data is successfully migrated using the ssis devart components so if you want to try out the ssis devart component then you can just create an account on their website and then you can download and install the trial version for 30 days so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much